Good morning, welcome to another One Word Prayer Bite Sized Thoughts. Uh, today we are going to be thinking along the lines that we did yesterday of how we address God and how we approach Him. See, as I pointed out yesterday, often when we talk to God, we say God, and that's not bad, that's not wrong. But God is kind of what He is, it isn't who He is. It'd be a bit like me, um, if I, my relationship with Naomi, if I went wife, uh, wife, I can tell you that wouldn't go well for very long, or she called me husband, it would feel a bit impersonal. That might be who I am, that might be what I am to her, her husband, and she's my wife. But it wouldn't be the way that I address her, that doesn't seem quite right. She has a name, and she has a face, and that title removes those things. And I think the same is true with God. God is what he is, and it's true, but it creates distance where God wants closeness, where he wants connection. And so yesterday we thought about Abba. Abba is who he is, not what he is. He's our father, who we can trust. But you, God also has another name. I know it nearly gave it away as if it's a big spoiler. Um, the name Jesus. And that name captures who God is. If you go to the book of Hebrews, it's in the New Testament. There is a, an opening line and it says, God has spoken in many ways, in different forms throughout history. He sent people, uh, men and women to speak for God. He did signs and, and prophets and, and all sorts of things that God did to speak and communicate to his people. But he says, in these last days, he has spoken most clearly through his son. It means God can speak in many ways and he does. God can reveal himself in many ways. There are burning bushes, there are, there are arcs, there are tents, there are symbols, there are all these things that reveal him. But the clearest, most accurate way to know what God is like, to know who God is, is Jesus. He is more than just a saviour who saves us. That's, that's wonderful and we cherish that. But he shows us the face of God. He shows us the heart of God. The way that Jesus treats people is the way God treats people. The way Jesus speaks to people is the way God speaks to people. The way Jesus loves people is the way God loves people. The thing that breaks his heart are the things that break God's heart. Everything about him is to communicate. He is the face of God. God in the flesh, God with us, however you want to put it. That's what the name Jesus captures. I know there are people even in our own fellowship who when they worship just repeat the name Jesus. Because it just it captures everything that they're focusing on in that moment when they're caught up in praise. It's him. It's him. It's seeing his face. Everything that they see, all the goodness and grace that they sing about are summed up in Jesus. John, one of the writers of the gospel, puts it like this. He showed up. He lived in our neighborhood and he was full of grace and truth. When we met him, we met grace. When we met him, we met the truth of who God is. And it was just precious. And so when you pray, as, as I said yesterday, you can call him God. That's not technically wrong. But a more accurate way to describe who he is to us is he is Jesus. He is one of us, but not one of us. He is God in the flesh who captures everything about him. And I would say that everything that you've come to love, everything that you worship, everything that you celebrate about who God is, pretty much is captured in who Jesus is. In, in how he treats people, in how he responds to situations, in what he did and what he achieved and what he gave and what he laid down. It's him that captures your heart. It's him that draws you in. And for many people, it's the turning point. They spend all their life growing up hearing about God and, and what God's like and who God is and what God did and all these stories about God. But it was when they met Jesus that suddenly something changed. It was when God stopped being abstract and out there that it became Jesus in the flesh who could see us, who understood us, who had eyes and a face that we could read. It was when that happened that their faith became real and came alive. If we need anything right now, it's a faith that's real and alive. A faith that's connected with Jesus, that follows him, that gets to know him more, that celebrates who he is because he's the only one that matters. There is a great story, it's in the Bible. Um, Jesus has gone to the cross and he's died and he's risen again and, and the disciples, they've obviously fled um, and then they've heard these rumours about the body being missing and they, they've gone back to fishing because it's what they know. And the story says that they're, they're coming in and Jesus is on land and he's cooking breakfast for them, he's getting ready for them. And it says, Peter, 
uh, who's always the kind of brash type it seems he sees it it's Jesus and it says and I love the way it puts it, it says he puts on his coat and then he jumped in the water and swam the shore leaving the others to come in and bring in the fish there is just this unhinged excitement I mean most people would take off a coat then jump into the water and swim but Peter's so flustered it seems it says he puts it on then jumps in just to get near him that's how good it is that Jesus is there and he can't wait to get there that he just gets all flustered in and then finally comes to him and finds Peter finds Jesus and and rediscovers him and his love for him again that's when Jesus has this conversation and says Peter do you love me and Peter says yes and he asks him again, do you love me? Because that's all that matters. Our love for him. Because in Jesus, we see God's love for us. If you've been unclear, if you have questions about who God is, the clearest, simplest answer is, does it look like Jesus? Does it sound like Jesus? If you've got questions about God, what I might be saying to you, the easiest way to clarify that is, does it sound like Jesus? Does it look like Jesus? He is our window. He is our, our, our doorway. He is our gateway. He's the way, the truth and the life. He's the way that we discover who God is. And as we said yesterday, the most important thing about you and I is what we think when we think of God. If you can't help but think of him as distant, as cold, as reserved, then we've missed something. Because Jesus is anything but that. He comes near and he places his hand on those who are distant and he throws his arms around those who are lost and he lifts the head of those who are weary and he embraces those who are broken and he heals those who are, are fractured by this world and he pours out love and grace in unreserved and, and crazy ways but beautiful and wonderful and inspiring ways and he longs to do that for us too. When you say the name Jesus, you are tapping into the power and the grace and the goodness that that name represents. It's not a magic spell. The word doesn't mean anything, but it's who the name points us to. It's who it leads us to that matters. So we're just going to pause and, and make that our prayer. We're calling on the name of Jesus, the name we're told above every other name, the name that it, there is power and beauty and glory in it. The name that represents so much to so many of us. We can't go far wrong with the one word prayer, Jesus. So we pause now. And as we pause, we recognise that we can get so tied up with, with doctrine. We can get so tied up with beliefs and, and what we should be doing with our lives. We can get so tied up with our concerns about today. But we come and we just say, Jesus. And as we say that, we're, we're brought back to the feet of our Saviour, the dusty-footed Messiah. We're brought back to the one who sees into our soul and doesn't shrink away. We're brought back into the presence of the one who puts his arm around us and carries us. We're brought back to the, the scarred hands of the ones who gave his life for us. And we're brought back to the love and the grace that truly represents who our God is. Father, I pray for us today that where we have gone astray, where we have a picture of God, but it doesn't match who Jesus is, that we would leave it behind. Because you have spoken most clearly in him. We thank you that you put us under that name. That the grace and the power and the truth it represents is, is for us. It's channeled in, in goodness towards us. And I pray today, Father, that we would see your Son as the image of the invisible God. Help us to see him clearly today. Jesus. Amen.
Thank you very much for joining us. Um, that will be a prayer that you may want to, to use throughout the day uh, at different points, just to pause and bring your heart back and, and say, Jesus, it's you again, seeking you again. And then I'll see you again tomorrow for another One Word Prayer Bite Size Thought. I'll see you then.